The United States President Joe Biden is expected to meet with top financial regulators. A meeting is scheduled to take place on Monday, the 21st of June, to discuss such matters regarding the best implementation of his administration's priorities, including discussions on climate change, inclusion, and the overall health of the system they operate. And just maybe, they might end up dabbling into such trending topics like the case with Ripple Labs and the SEC. As much as we can say, the SEC is going to be in attendance. But are they going to be talking about cryptocurrencies and how to regulate them? Well, your guess is as good as mine. Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, please consider hitting that subscribe button and turning on post notifications. Don't forget you can join our free Discord group via the link in the description for daily signals and a community of like-minded traders and investors. And now you can also support us on Patreon. We have several packages you can choose from according to your particular investment goals or needs, and we have a special offer for our first 100 members, only $9.99 for VIP access on Discord, which gives you exclusive benefits far beyond the free features. Be sure to check out the links in the video description and in the pinned comment. We also have a special discount offer on Binance. You'll get 5% off every trade you make on the platform if you sign up with our promo link in the description. In our last video, we talked about the recent interview between Ripple's chief technology officer David Schwartz and Tony from Thinking Crypto. We had the Ripple CTO explain all sorts of stuff from the federated sidechains, XRP being used as a bridge currency, and some other great stuff. We'll also be looking at some explosive gains for the XRP coin in today's video, considering Ripple just did away with a whopping $1.3 billion from the SEC under the hood. During the interview with Thinking Crypto, Ripple's chief technician shared his thoughts on the recent updates around the Ripple vs. SEC lawsuit. In his words, they seem to say that Bitcoin and Ethereum are not securities. And then they kind of walk that back a little bit when people push them. They've left everything in limbo. It's driving innovation out of the United States. And to be fair, the United States has always been a difficult jurisdiction, largely because we have 50 states and we have an enormous number of different federal regulators with overlapping areas of authority. Now, on that note, let's take a look at an article from one of our favorite crypto blog sites, You Today, titled Court Grants Permission to Ripple CEO and Co-Founder to Seek International Judicial Assistance. The individual defendant's motion for issuance of letters of request for international judicial assistance were granted. Attorney James K. Filan is an excellent resource for anything related to the ongoing lawsuit between Ripple Labs and the SEC. And of course, we have other attorneys backing Ripple in this lawsuit, pro bono, such as attorney John Deaton and Jeremy Hogan. At the same time, John Deaton is renowned for single-handedly bringing up the case depending on an intervener's right to defend Ripple before the New York District Court. Jeremy Hogan is well known for selling XRP to his reasonably large following on YouTube via his channel, Legal Briefs. But James Filan does a great job explaining what every one of these lawsuits entail. Following the content of a tweet from his attorney, who's also pro-XRP, the court has granted the fintech company CEO Brad Garlinghouse, as well as the group's co-founder and executive chairman Chris Larson, the authorization to put forth letters of inquiry for the company to seek international judicial assistance against the SEC. Running through some of the comments on that post out there on Twitter, we have some assumptions about that. Many people have many different interpretations of the court's latest actions in favor of Ripple and against the SEC. This is not surprising at all, given this is not the first time that this is happening. However, one particular comment from a Twitter user did stick. The Twitter user did hit the nail on the head with that one. First, we have a comment from the creator of that post, James Filan himself, where he says that the letters for international assistance, called letters rogatory, were just formally issued by the court and picked up by Cleary Gottlieb Steen and Hamilton LLP, and they'll be served in the central authorities of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, the Cayman Islands, the British Virgin Islands, the Hong Kong Special Administrative Region of China, the Republic of Singapore, the Republic of Seychelles, the Republic of Korea, and the Republic of Malta. Then we have this comment from Twitter user Kama Guster, who says that Ripple is collecting evidence in order to reduce the possible damage should the court make a ruling against them and in favor of the SEC. As reported by Yuri Malkin of the U Today blog, according to the commenter, the purpose of these letters sent out by Ripple to the court is centered around the fact that the SEC only has jurisdiction over sales in the USA. So they, Ripple, are gathering data, which proves that the SEC has no jurisdiction over a big part of the $1.3 billion. This means that Ripple might as well be on its way to victory, as we might be seeing a settlement where Ripple becomes victorious and walks away without paying a single dime. As read in that article, it says Filan, who often shared news regarding the legal case with the XRP community, has explained that the aforementioned letters are also known as letters rogatory, letters of request, 
i.e. a formal request, to a court of another country for some sort of judicial assistance. So we've had Ripple CTO mentioning the importance of XRP, where he made an example of a public blockchain and the XRP private ledger proposed for the central banking system. He cites that a financial service provider on both sides could facilitate users' payments between those two ecosystems at the vendor's own risk, effort, and time, adding that although customers wouldn't get the greatest experience, but it would be pretty good. And what my hope is, is once the central banks start to get confident that the system is working the way it's designed to, they'll have a big red button that they can push to knock the walls down. In his analogy, the expert cryptographer for Ripple Labs hypothesized that when these Federal Reserve banks of the world start to regain some sort of confidence in the entire Ripple system, they'll knock down those walls. But until then, and in the short term, we're to expect that the bulk of the liquidity will come from the same traditional sources. David Schwartz went on to cite an example with the US Euro model from an earlier case study where he indicated that amidst rumors that leading banks in the United States are looking to start their cryptocurrency like the JPM coin with JP Morgan Chase Bank, which is believed to rival XRP in the race for the most sought after digital asset for financial transaction settlements in the US and eventually the world at large. Nonetheless, Ripple CTO is bullish that XRP's mainstream adoption is undeniable. I might be a financial institution in the United States and I can hold the euro balance and I can make euro payments, but I need to get from US dollars to euro somehow. And probably, what will happen is the very same players that are making the US to Euros liquidity today, like JP Morgan Chase, will make liquidity on this new system. And it would be more competitive, and their margins, I hope, would be tight, and customers would get good experience. The exciting part of the interview is where David Schwartz buttresses XRP's utility against all odds. And then when it comes to pathways that aren't like USD to Euro, where someone can't afford to spend $5 billion to make the liquidity in that card, are great. Assets like XRP that can move across international borders in seconds for pennies will find a use case, sort of in that very, very long tail. I think you guys should check that one out. You could search for that here on YouTube using the title Ripple CTO David Schwartz Interview, XRPL Federated Sidechains, SEC Lawsuit, PolySign Cohen. Just as we've seen the much-anticipated amendment to the XRP ledger, which enables its protocol to be powered with smart contract functionality, now live and in its beta version, Following Ripple's itinerary and looking at the company's roadmap, you could see that the team has accomplished its greater milestone between the first two quarters of 2021 so far. Thank you for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, please consider leaving a like on this video, hitting that subscribe button, and turning on post notifications. Don't forget you can still join our free Discord group via the link in the description, and you can now also support us on Patreon. If you have any questions or comments, let us know. We'll see you next time. Hollywood Carson